So it's kind of bittersweet. Well, probably more sweet than bitter because 2020 kind of sucked, but this is the last Sitter Cell video talking about 2020 sneaker releases. What's up, everybody? I'm Seth Fowler, and this is Sitter Cell. Thanks so much for tuning in today. Please make sure to hit that subscribe button down below if you haven't yet, and also make sure to give me a follow on Instagram and on Twitter at RealSethFowler. So today I actually want to start things off a little bit differently than I usually do and feature some Instagram posts and Twitter posts from you guys. As I'm sure a lot of you guys know, I actually co-founded a sock brand called Apothecary. And for me, the craziest thing about getting this whole business started and actually producing socks that we're able to sell to people is the reception and the love that you guys have showed us. So I wanted to reciprocate that a little bit and feature some of you guys guys rocking the socks in your awesome fits. So if you guys are into this, I'll do this every couple weeks or every couple of videos, depending on how into it you guys actually are. But without further ado, let's just jump right into it. So the first post is from Osborne X Inc on Instagram, and he's actually rocking this Fire Union LA sneaker fit with the Apothecary Garrison collab socks. I almost called his shirt and his hat the upper, but he's got like the matching blue fit throughout the top half of his body that matches the blue on the Union LA's. You've got the red on the tag, which also matches the red on the Apothecary logo. And even with the face mask he's matching a little bit. He's got some pinks and some yellows which tie in really nicely with the yellows of the Union LA's and the pink kind of works pretty well with the red on the shoe and on the socks. Seriously, a fire fit and shout out to Jason for putting this together. Next up on Twitter from J. Adrian Sin, we've got four different pictures showing off four different sneaker fits. He's got all four of the new striped socks that we just dropped last week. They look super, super fresh. You've got the black and red socks with the Yeezy 380's which seem to be the reflective ones actually which is pretty sick. You've got the green and white with the uh, green and white Air Jordan 1s. You've got the black and bone with the Yeezy 700 V2s. And of course, rounding off the set, you've got the heather gray and white with the Yeezy 500s, which I think is my favorite combination. I just love the way that looks together. His caption is pairing the Apothecary Black Friday drop with some of my collection, hashtag Feed Heat. Feed Heat for sure, my guy, that looks awesome. And then finally on Instagram, we've got Dylan Gamelli, Jamelli, and he's rocking this insane work outfit. Dylan's got a classic MJ black and red jersey on. He's also got the 2013 Chicago Air Jordan 1s on, which is kind of crazy to wear to the gym. That's an awesome sneaker. And he ties it all together with the apothecary black and red striped socks. But this dude goes all out when he goes to the gym. He's even got the Chicago Bulls hat on too, which is kind of nuts. Damn, how does this dude's fit to the gym look better than like every fit that I have? I just don't get it. I didn't even see the second picture. The dude's got a whole Sonics fit as well. That's crazy. Yo, Dylan dude. You're killing it, man. He's got the Sonics jersey. He's got the Sonic hat. He's got the Concord 11s and he ties it all together with the black and bone apothecary socks. Yo, shout out to Dylan, man. He's doing the most. He's killing it, man. I can tell you right now, if I actually went to the gym, my fits wouldn't look anywhere close to that. But that's everyone for today. If you guys would like to be featured next time, make sure to post your apothecary fits on Instagram or on Twitter and tag apothecary and myself at Real Seth Fowler. And of course, today at 12 p.m. Eastern time, we've got our brand new apothecary sock drop on apothecary.com, which is linked in the description below. All the styles from today's drop are on our Sock 2.0s, which are our brand new socks, which we've actually upgraded with new breathability on the top of the foot. We've made them a little bit shorter and we've made them so they pill a lot less by changing up the material makeup. You got four different colorways, black and metallic silver, green and metallic gold, purple on purple, and gray with yellow and red. So if you guys wanna grab any of the Apothecary Sock 2.0s, make sure to be on apothecary.com at 12 p.m. Eastern time today because they usually sell out very quickly. But getting into the actual sitter cell video today, like I said, this is the last 2020 sitter cell. I mean, we're gonna be doing another sitter cell video before the end of the year for the beginning of January, but this is the last one for 2020 sneaker releases. And while this year was nuts in real life, when it comes to sneaker releases, there was a lot of really great drops. And the good news is the drops for the second half of December 2020 continue to be solid throughout the end of the year. So I guess without further ado, let's just jump right into it. Starting things off on December 15th, we've got the Reebok Question Mid in black and red. Apparently this Question Mid is coming in a Philly 76ers theme, which of course I'm all about. I do have to say though that this just black and red colorway doesn't make me immediately think Sixers. Apparently Reebok is trying to push the Question Mid silhouette once again by creating a bunch of different Allen Iverson inspired colorways because because of course it's his shoe. And this latest version comes with the black leather upper accented by red patent leather around the top of the midsole and a red midsole. The shoe itself looks fine. I'm obviously kind of into Allen Iverson, so you'd think I'd be really into this shoe, but it's just not really the best question mid colorway. And I already have a good amount of them and I just don't feel like this colorway is necessary for me to own. Even though this black and red colorway is pretty solid, I don't think there's a lot of people out there who are just gonna rush out to the store to grab it. So because of that, I think this shoe is gonna sit. 
Next up, we've got the Nike LeBron 8 Lakers. This shoe officially starts off the Nike LeBron 8 Retros. However, this colorway isn't an OG colorway. This purple and gold colorway is obviously to honor LeBron's most recent championship with the Lakers, and I think for Laker fans out there, this is a really great sneaker. Don't get me wrong, the shoe doesn't look bad, and if you're a fan of the Lakers or you just love purple and gold, this is definitely a great sneaker to pick up, but it's not a shoe that I feel like has that same sort of pull that any of the classic LeBron 8 colorways have. I get why they're dropping this colorway first, because the championship was just like a month ago, but I feel like it would have been a stronger move to drop one of the classic LeBron 8 colorways first, just to start things off right. That said, while I do think the shoe is going to be a popular sneaker, I don't think there's enough hype out there to really make this sneaker actually sell out. So for that reason, I'm giving this shoe a sit. Then moving on to December 16th, we've got the Nike Daybreak in Armory Blue. This shoe originally released back in 1979 and features the original waffle sole from that original sneaker. For some reason, Nike recently decided to just start retroing a ton of these sneakers, and even though the first colorway to retro of this shoe did sell out, I don't think any of the more recent colorways have. There's nothing wrong with the shoe, especially if you love the history of Nike, this is definitely a blast from the past. However, if you're just buying a shoe to wear every day, there are more comfortable sneakers out there that I would definitely recommend over this sneaker. I just don't feel like this retro has enough going on to get people interested in it, so because of that, I'm gonna give it a sit. After that, we've got the Nike Overbreak in College Gray. This shoe takes obvious inspiration from the ISPA Road Warrior that released recently, and I believe the shoe features a full-length React midsole. I think this midsole was taken directly from the Overreacts, which released a couple months ago, and that was a shoe that was surprisingly popular because of how different it was, because of how much React was actually in the midsole. What's interesting to me about this shoe is how they pair a classic-looking Nike upper with a crazy futuristic midsole. And let's be honest, while this tan and gray colorway is a little bit plain, I feel like like it's super wearable and people are going to be into it. Even though the shoe isn't crazy hyped, I feel like there's still enough interest in this kind of sneaker tooling and I don't think they're making a lot of this sneaker, so because of that, I'm going to give this shoe a sell. Moving on to December 17th, we've got the Nike Air Presto Origins. At first I thought this shoe was like an international themed sneaker and featured a ton of different flags from different countries, but when I actually got a closer look at the shoe, I realized that it features iconography that symbolizes the different release colorways of this shoe. I think the one that really tipped me off was the bumblebee icon that was on there, and while sure, I get the inspiration, I just don't love the way that this sneaker looks. The Nike Air Presto was once one of the most popular sneakers out, and recently it's had a little bit of a resurgence because of the off-white collaboration and some of the newer React versions of the shoe, but I feel like people are finally starting to cool down on this sneaker once again, and I just don't think there's enough hype behind this shoe to actually make it sell out, so because of that, I'm gonna give this shoe a sit. Also releasing on the 17th, we've got the Nike Air Max 95 Neon. The neon colorway of the 95 is the original colorway, and because of that, this shoe has like a cult following. While I'm not a fan of the 95 personally, I feel like if there was any 95 for me to pick up, it would be the neon colorway. There's just something about that black fading to white from the midsole of the shoe up to the laces of the sneaker, and those subtle neon green hits that just really make this shoe pop. The Air Max 95 is also one of the most popular Air Maxes, so when its most popular colorway releases, a lot of people are stoked on it. And even even though there's going to be a lot of pairs of these releasing, in fact they're releasing in full family sizes, I do think there's enough people who are excited to actually make this shoe sell out. Then rounding off December 17th, we've got two different colorways of the Nike Sakai Vapor Waffle. The two colorways that are dropping are the Tor Yellow, which comes in yellow and green, and the String Black colorway, which comes in a more maroon black and green makeup. So far, this is the second release of the Nike Sakai Vapor Waffles. The first time the shoe dropped, it dropped in a really clean black and white colorway, which I definitely think I prefer. But these colorways aren't bad, and they're definitely a solid consolation prize for those of us who missed out on the original releases. Now personally, if I had to pick one of these shoes to actually rock, at first, I was going to say the maroon colorway because I just prefer maroon, but once I really started to look at the shoes, I think I prefer the Tor Yellow colorway just because it's more interesting and I think I could wear it with more. I don't know, the string black colorway just seems a little bit too muddy for me and you don't get a lot of those really cool details that make up this sneaker. If you're not familiar with this collaboration, Sakai and Nike have been working together for a while now and all their sneakers are sort of mashups of two different sneakers in one and that's why there's so many doubled up details and that's why this shoe features a crazy split midsole which, let's be honest, kind of looks like a mouth. I've said that in every video, but I can't get over it. Whether you like these shoes or not, there are people out there who love them, and there are resellers out there who want that profit, so because of that, both of these colorways will definitely sell out. Then on December 18th, we've got one of the many Yeezys dropping in December, and that's the Yeezy 350 V2 Sand Taupe. I've actually got a pair of these coming in, so if you guys want to stay tuned for that review, make sure to hit that notification bell if you haven't yet, and definitely subscribe if you haven't yet, which is kind of a given. But I've got to say, out of all the tan Yeezys that have released this year, this one 
This one might be my favorite. I don't know, there's just something about that orange hit on the top half of the sneaker. It's not that different, and from a distance, it looks like every other Yeezy 350 that came out this year in tan, but I don't know. I just like it. As I just mentioned, the shoe comes in tonal tans or topes, and then you've also got a dark brown color on the outsole. It's not the most exciting Yeezy release ever, but it's a 350 V2, which is a shoe that a lot of people are always excited about, and because of that, I definitely think this shoe will sell out. Moving on to December 19th, we've got a shoe that I've been really looking forward to, and that's the Sean Cliver Nike Dunk Low Holiday Surprise. This Nike Dunk Low is a Christmas-themed sneaker because apparently Sean Cliver is a huge fan of Christmas, but I mean, who isn't? And it comes in a really clean white, blue, and gold makeup. I said this in a previous video, but I feel like this is the epitome of a Christmas or holiday-themed sneaker done right. And the reason I say that is because it's the kind of shoe that can be worn all year round. And as we'll see later on in this video, there are Christmas sneakers that can be worn all year round, but that's because they've got a crazy history and because they're really hyped up. This shoe, while it will be hyped, just looks good and can be worn in the summer with no issues. Like I mentioned, the sneaker features light blue suede on the upper, accented by white leather and a metallic gold Nike swoosh, and then on the outsole of the sneaker, you've got a semi-translucent blue rubber accented by gold sparkles, which I'm not the biggest fan of, but you don't really see them because they're underneath the shoe. That actually might be the most Christmassy detail on the sneaker. I guess he had to add that in. Regardless, this is a dope sneaker, and good news for all those family sneaker heads out there, it comes in full family sizing. However, as I'm sure you know by this point, Nike Dunks are as popular as they've ever been, so actually grabbing a pair of these will not be easy. And obviously, I think this shoe will sell out. And then, rounding off December 19th, we've got the Air Jordan 13 Hyper Royal. This shoe comes in a pretty clean color block, very similar to that of the Bread 13s, except instead of red, you've got Hyper Royal or Teep Blue. And I've gotta say, I think this is one of the most anticipated Air Jordan 13 releases of the entire year. This is a shoe that people have been looking forward to. Of course, the sneaker features that black nylon style fabric on the upper that we're used to on Air Jordan 13s. It's got a black leather toe, and then of course, a blue suede accent near the midsole of the sneaker. As far as 13s go, I think this is gonna to be the most popular 13 colorway after the Flint 13s. Because of that, I think this shoe will definitely sell out. Continuing on to December 21st, we've got the Air Jordan Center Court. This Air Jordan 1 low style sneaker was first debuted on Michael Jordan's feet in the Last Dance documentary. Not while he was playing, but while he was actually giving the interview. This shoe is kind of odd because it's more of a lifestyle sneaker than any sort of basketball sneaker. And again, it looks very similar to an Air Jordan 1 low, but apparently it's its own separate silhouette. Actually, the more that I look at it, the more that it has like Stan Smith vibes to it, which I guess isn't a bad thing. It's a pretty classic sneaker, so I get the inspiration, but it's not something I would ever really wear on a regular basis. It's something I might get my dad, but not really for me. The first colorway of the shoe comes in a white leather upper with a white midsole, accented by a large, oversized Wings logo embroidered onto the heel. I'm not gonna lie, it's not a bad look, it's just not something I feel like I need. I mean, I'll pick it up if you guys want me to review it, so let me know in the comment section down below, but it's not something I just walk up to my door and be like, yeah, I wanna throw on the center courts today. Regardless, because it's a new Jordan brand silhouette and because it was featured so heavily in the Last Dance documentary, I definitely think this first colorway of the center courts is probably going to sell out. Then, rounding off December 21st, we've got the Yeezy 700 V3 Clay Brown. This is actually another shoe that I picked up to review, so again, if you guys want to see this review, make sure to hit that notification bell down below. But as far as styling goes, this 700 V3 doesn't stray that much from previous 700 V3s. The midsole and upper of the shoe feature a very dark gray or almost black color, and then the only real accent color that I can see on the shoe are the sort of brown stripes running across the midfoot of the sneaker. Now, what I'm interested in with this colorway in particular is whether that midfoot cage actually glows. I have no idea, I'm just gonna have to test it as soon as the shoe comes in, but I'm interested to find out. But at the end of the day, just like the 350 V2s that we had just talked about, this silhouette is still very popular, and because of that, I think this shoe is definitely going to sell. Then, on December 23rd, we've got two different versions of the Adidas Yeezy Quantum Frozen Blue dropping. Obviously, the two different versions of the shoe that are dropping are the lifestyle version and the basketball version, and as of right now, we don't really have any solid pictures as to what the difference between these two shoes are. In the past, the difference was that the basketball version featured a TPU midfoot cage on the upper. However, we have had previous Yeezy Quantum releases happen where the lifestyle version also featured that midfoot cage. So to be honest, I'm not totally sure what the difference is going to be, but I guess I'm excited to find out. The frozen blue colorway of the Adidas Yeezy Quantum remains relatively the same as previous Yeezy Quantums. It features a black ankle area, a black heel counter, and a 3M heel counter accent. The only real difference that I can see on the shoe are the blue details on the midfoot. And while this colorway isn't bad, I still prefer the original Quantum colorway over this colorway. But as you probably expected, just like I said with the other Yeezy sneakers that we just talked about, I think both styles of this Yeezy Quantum will sell out. 
Then on Christmas Eve, December 24th, we've got one release, and that's the Nike Kobe 6 Pro Trail Grinch. This release is special for a couple different reasons. One, this is the year that Kobe passed, and I think a lot of people are really missing him, and having a shoe to remind them of Kobe is kind of a nice sort of comfort. The second is that this will be the first Kobe 6 Pro Trail to release, and the third and the most obvious one is that the Grinch colorway is one of the most popular Kobe colorways of all time, and this is the first time this shoe is retroed, or I guess Pro Trail. The original Grinch Kobe 6s released around around Christmas time in 2010, and it quickly became one of the most popular colorways of any sneaker of all time. And since then, people have been looking forward to a retro of this shoe because the resale prices of the original keep going up and up and up. And I mean, honestly, I think for a lot of people, this colorway has become a grail. And so this Pro Tro version of the shoe is gonna be an instant cop for a lot of people. Now, unfortunately, I just don't think Nike is gonna create a lot of pairs of these. It would be great if they made this a GR and everyone who wanted a pair of these could grab them, but I just don't see that happening. So because of that, I think not only will this sneakers sell out, but it will sell out almost instantly. Then the day after Christmas on December 26th, we've got the Air Jordan 12 Reverse Flu Game. As you may have guessed from the name of the sneaker, this shoe is essentially the Flu Game colorway, which was black and red, except switched, so that the black is now on the mudguard of the sneaker and the red is now on the upper of the shoe. Unfortunately, I think it's fair to say that this colorway just doesn't look anywhere close to as good as the original colorway, and I think even with the suede upper, this shoe is just not it, at least for me. I guess the 12 in general, I'm just not a huge fan of. I used to be like the biggest 12 fan, but the more that I aged and the the older that I got, the closer that I got towards 30, I just stopped liking the shoe. It just felt too much like a boot on my feet and it just didn't feel like something I could wear reasonably every day. And this colorway in particular, it just doesn't look good to me and it also doesn't have any really history behind it. So because of that, it's a pass for me. But as you probably noticed this year, all the Air Jordan retro sneakers from the Air Jordan 1 all the way up to the Air Jordan 14, whether they're OG colorways or not, they've all sold out almost instantly. And I think even though this colorway isn't that great, people are still gonna be excited about it because it's an Air Jordan 12, and for that reason, I'm gonna give this shoe a sell. And then finally, rounding off today's video, on December 30th, we've got one of the most expensive sneakers to drop this month, and that's the Air Jordan 11 Adapt. So because 2020 is the 25th anniversary of the Air Jordan 11, Jordan brand has decided to go all out and drop some pretty crazy 11s this year. And I think it's fair to say that the Air Jordan 11 Adapt is one of the craziest, and it's not just because it has a $500 price point, which I know is insane. What makes this shoe interesting is because they've decided to put the auto lacing system that they've had on previous basketball sneakers on an Air Jordan 11. Which I guess I get because the original Air Jordan 11 sketch by Tinker Hatfield was not supposed to have laces, but I don't know, it just doesn't seem necessary to me. The Air Jordan 11 Adapt comes in an almost Columbia colorway with a translucent blue outsole, white patent leather, and white upper. However, the shoe is accented by black details around the lacing system and on the tongue. You know, I've had a lot of the Adapt Nike sneakers, and while I think it's a cool concept, and while I'm still blown away by the technology that goes into the shoe, it's just not something that I ever really found myself wearing on a daily basis. So while yes, I am probably going to try and buy this sneaker so I can review it for you guys, it's not a shoe that if I wasn't a sneaker reviewer, I would plan to buy. However, I know there's a lot of people out there who have been waiting for the perfect shoe with that Fit Adapt system to wow their friends, so I know there's people who are interested in this sneaker, and of course there's Air Jordan 11 collectors who need this sneaker, and I also think there's not going to be a lot of pairs of these available, so because of that, I think this shoe is going to sell out very quickly and probably resell for a lot. But that pretty much wraps up all of the sneaker releases for... I guess the rest of the year, which is kind of crazy to say. I would love to know your thoughts on all of the sneakers dropping and which shoes you're planning to pick up, so make sure to let me know in the comment section down below. Also, don't forget to check out the brand new Apothecary sock drop on apothecary.com, which is linked in the description below. And as always, thank you so much for watching. Make sure to subscribe if you haven't yet, and I'll see you all in the next one.